Is there a way to help in this epidemic crisis even if I'm locked within the four walls of my house? Well, Help From Home page says that while the COVID-19 keeps some of us under strict home quarantine, we can still support those who can't. Help From Home page is an information hub that helps folks at home support those who are the frontliners and families at risk in the Philippines, and is run by a task force of concerned individuals looking for ways to help amidst the quarantine. The information hub allows us to reach out to those frontliners and lend a helping hand without violating the practice of social distancing. They have prepared a website which contains a directory for initiatives that help our frontliners and the marginalized. Help from Home is reliable since all the initiatives posted on its website go through a careful process of verification. So, if you'd like to support our frontliners and the families at risk, you can start by going to www.helpfromhome.ph or visit their Facebook and Instagram at helpfromhome.ph. In light of the recent lockdowns due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all upcoming episodes of Seniors on Air Radio are pre-recorded. This ensures that the production of our episodes can continue, while at the same time ensuring the safety of our hosts and interviewees, as well as giving our technical team enough space to maneuver within the technological limits that we have to face. We certainly can't wait to see you again live from our radio station. Until then, come fly with us at the safety of our own homes and enjoy the episode. Welcome to another episode of SOAR. And uh, I'm DJ DJ, and here's DJ LA, DJ Corbo, and DJ Ace again with me. Today, we'll be having a very interesting, timely, and relevant discussion regarding safe spaces. Safe spaces are basically going to be discussing about how to make our schools safer, more understanding, and a better place to be in for students, especially with everything that has happened recently. So we're not gonna talk too much. We're gonna see you at the end. We're gonna see you at the end and see and see a synthesis of what just happened. We'll leave our we leave everything to our speakers right now. So without further ado, here 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 are our speakers and I hope you enjoy so Hi, my name is Kara Angan, a recent graduate of the Atenea de Manila Senior High School and an advocate for zero tolerance for sexual violence and discrimination in schools. So how do we achieve safer spaces for students inside these schools? I think it comes in three parts. The first step has to start with the acknowledgement of a problem. The administration has to acknowledge that there are students that they failed and that there are students who live with lifelong trauma. The presence of a due process and a policy and the success of some cases doesn't change the fact that there were students left behind and students who felt that the school had failed them. These are the students who are now wounded. We are asking for our school to recognize those because recognition is how we heal those wounds. These wounds are the reason why the first batch of ASHS students well into their third year of college are still carrying the heartbreak of their two years that they spent in the ASHS. And the school needs to publicly acknowledge that. Acknowledgement is the first step to meaningful change, to make their voices feel heard, and to make the community understand that the school is taking a stance against it. The second step is in transparency. Students do not trust the school because they do not see the school taking, taking a stance on it. We have to be very clear. Transparency doesn't mean publishing the details of the case and the names of who were involved. It looks like numerical transparency reports with the number of cases reported, pursued, and resolved. There is precedence for this. Walk a few meters across campus to the Leola schools, where the Gender Hub and the Sangus Commission Against Sexual Misconduct and Violence published these reports. The effect of transparency is clear. They went from single-digit reports to 42 from one school year to the next. While data privacy is important, when we compare the vast harms that are caused when we prioritize privacy over trust, you have to side with transparency. And the last step in making our schools safer spaces 
is involving students and parents in the policy-making process. Students need to have a say in policies that pertain to their rights. And parents need to have a say in policies that pertain to the protection of their children. There are bodies already existing in the ASHS community, such as the ASHS Sangunian and the Parents' Union, that can be tapped on in making these policy changes. While we acknowledge the authority of administrators working on these policies, we have to ask, are these policies student-oriented? Design thinking, which involves the inputs of the market the solution is catered for, is a course that Hume students take up in school. The school should do the same. It is, it is a fact that the sexual harassment policy of the ASHS does not exist in the student handbook. And this is true. It's referred to an Appendix D that does not exist. I think it is now more than ever that administrators take into the account the views of parents and students as important stakeholders in crafting of these policies that currently do not exist. And second, when it comes to maintaining these spaces online, especially considering online classes, I think that the past week has proven that predators and harassers operate online. This looks like inappropriate secret conversations, Google drives of non-consensual pictures of minors, and online abuse. We need a, a strong decentralized online hubs, like the guidance office doing online counseling for these people, for these survivors, an SHS gender hub and commission against sexual misconduct and violence that operates online in the submission of reports and vetting these reports and holding online investigations to give these survivors justice. It also looks like public statements and transparency reports made by the school that can be disseminated online on their social media platforms, on email blasts that they give us, and messages that they send to parents. This is important in creating a public commitment to maintaining safe spaces when there is none to begin with. In the same way, our schools teach us to be humble, teach us to stand up against this patriarchal government, and to fight for the least the last and the lost, we need our institutions to do the same for us. This isn't about acting like entitled, spoiled teenagers. This is about working and calling for justice in the same way our school taught us to do so. Yes, we cannot promise perfection, but the cost of imperfection is a 15, 16, or 17-year-old's life changed forever because of verbal abuse, physical groping, and violation. But the very least we can do is give these survivors justice. This is a movement of hope, of a better system because we care about our students. But hope is not without substantial reforms. There are so many resources and avenues and precedents to solve this pervasive problem. The question now becomes, when? So, hello everyone, my name is Gab Dutado, and I am the Sangonian President of the ASHS. So, today, I will be answering a few questions from APCO. Okay, so for the first question, we have, How do we achieve safer spaces for students inside schools? So, I actually have three answers for this one. So, the first is we need sound policies and effective implementation. Hindi pwede dito na isa lang. Hindi pwede dito na sound policies lang meron tayo at wala tayong effective implementation. That is useless. Hindi pwede na vice versa. Na wala tayong sound policies pero meron tayong effective implementation. That again is useless. So, sound policies and effective implementation is the first thing we need in order to ensure that we are working towards safer spaces for students. Pangalawa is we need effective student body and school admin communication. So, this of course would be facilitated by none other than the Sangunian. The Sangunian here has an active role in facilitating the effective line of communication ng student body to the admin. And in order to do that, in order to be effective in that, the Sangu has to start conversations. 
they have to start asking good questions and receiving the feedback of the students regularly. So the third thing that we need in order to achieve safer spaces is programs. Programs that would reach out to the victim. So these kinds of programs would of course be led by the student council. But that doesn't mean that the admin wouldn't have any part in it all. So these programs would provide the following to the students. The access to peer support, the access to professional counseling with, of course, the experts dun sa issue nila, and yung emotional and psychological care. So the college in Ateneo has this. They have the SAS MV and they have the LS Gender Hub. The SAS MV is student led, the LS Gender Hub is more on the admin side. So yung soft response is the SAS MV, which is yung peer support, rational counsel, emotional and psychological care that is considered as a soft response. That is yun nga, nasa students, student counsel side siya. While yung sa admin is yung hard response. Dun na pumapasok yung filing of complaints. Dun pumapasok yung mismo investigation and yung hearing. So to sum up these three things that we need, let's look at it this way. The programs are there to provide support and relief to the victims. The sound policies are there to hold the offenders accountable and to provide systemic support and preventive measures. The effective implementation is needed because it is used to prevent cases of sexual harassment and gender discrimination in our campuses. While the effective line of communication is what ties all this together. So, the effective line of communication is needed in achieving new programs, is needed in achieving new creation of sound and comprehensive policies. The effective line of communication is needed in ensuring an effective implementation, either from Sangumanyan or from admin. Another thing I want to add is that yung action, of course, must not come from one side lang. And by that, I mean not just admin, not just student, not just sangu, but from those three groups of people, from, sad, from admin, from sangu, and from a student body. So, dapat collective and coordinated action siya. This is to ensure that we are working towards the same goal. And I want to add that policies are very crucial in shaping the culture of a community. That is why the presence of a good policy provides or acts as a catalyst. So the second question is, how do we maintain these spaces even in online learning? So, I want to reframe the question. I want to first answer how can we adapt it before even talking about how do we maintain it. So, first we adapt it by, una, learning the system. So, bago tong system natin, in less than six months, na formulate since unprecedented nga tong pandemic, so that means na kahit ira-rush yung maraming bagay, we must take action to be able to know the system, know the loopholes, know the strengths, know the weak points, and know the points for improvement. This would help us in the second point. So the second point of adapting it is acknowledging that we won't be able to integrate all previous processes. Hindi lahat malalagay natin. And we know that, we know na hindi lahat, because we know the system. We know how to adapt it, because we know the system. So once we acknowledge that we won't be able to integrate everything, it leads us to our third point. Our third point is to innovate. So since we know na hindi lahat malalagay natin, 
it's time for us to think of new ways. What can we do? What can we do better? Better in a way that it would suit the online system more than the previous physical mode of learning. So innovation requires us to be adaptable since a big part of policy making is looking at reality and recognizing the change in times. So we have to, leads, which leads us to our next point, we have to get feedback from the students. From the students, from the experts, and by experts I mean the legal department, or the experts in the LGBTQ plus community, or the experts in handling cases of sexual harassment. We need to be able to get their input and to integrate it into how we'll adapt these kinds of systems to online learning. And finally, of course, for maintenance. So for maintaining your safe spaces in online learning, we've already learned the system, we've integrated in previous policies and procedures, we've innovated and we've asked for feedback. Now, it's time for us to regularly check up the system. We need to make sure that there is continuous innovation we need to make sure that there is continuous feedback from the students. We need to make sure that we are constantly asking and starting a conversation about how can we make it better. Because that, as I said nga no una point, effective communication is a crucial part in achieving safer spaces. Kasi Safer spaces requires joint action from different groups of people. And in the context ng schools, it requires yung joint action ng admin, ng students, and ng student leaders. So, that is my answer for the questions of the article. Maraming salamat, and till next time. As representatives of the MCHS community, we believe that as schools serve as second homes for many, it is crucial for these institutions to establish a safe and nurturing environment where its members are comfortable and safe. Sexual harassment is only one of the many threats that schools are vulnerable to, and the controversial reports that have recently surfaced through the stories of students have only scratched the surface to the deeper problems of the systems that they have abided by for so many years. It's important for the school to reassure its members, especially the students, that their safety and well-being within and beyond the school gates are just as important as gearing them towards academic excellence. First and foremost, there must be a structure set in place uh, within the school, may this be an organization or committee where victims may readily report incidents of sexual misconduct. These mechanisms would ensure that the students uh, readily have a medium where they may address any form of sexual harassment which they have experienced, as well as provide them with much needed support and protection even after they have undergone the investigative processes. Um, it would be advisable if these structures possess contact with the authorities as well as legal and psychological aid. To add to this, the school administration, as they conduct the needed investigations for the case, uh, must also ensure that they uphold the utmost uh, transparency and ensure frequent communication with all stakeholders. Um, this is to make certain that the measures that these measures to address the issue of sexual harassment are administered promptly and justly. Student representation um, must also be present in the community formed by the school to investigate such matters. Um, lastly, there must be zero tolerance. For those who have breached the anti-sexual harassment policies, it's a must that their license be revoked if their educators 
um, so as to further prevent the future occurrences of sexual misconduct in any educational institutions. Secondly, the school must set place programs for students to be properly educated and empowered to address these issues with regard to sexual harassment. These may be um, briefings or talks on what sexual harassment is, what the students can do to combat this in different settings, and what the administration is doing to address these issues. The school must be vocal about these issues and allow their students to discuss topics like these as even to this day, um, topics regarding sex and sexual harassment are still taboo for many individuals. If the school were to be more open to reaffirming its existence in different settings, including their own, as well as placing preventive measures such as talks and seminars and etc. against sexual harassment explicitly, then students may be more empowered. Lastly, the school must constantly evaluate itself and its policies in order to ensure that um, they are properly defined, contextualized, and implemented. No physical contact policies uh, between students and teachers or other adult figures must be set in place and strictly implemented. Students may report breachings immediately to the um, to the school's administration. Incoming teachers must also be strictly screened and processed and that additional training or seminars are conducted regarding topics surrounding harassment and etc. As we transition into the mode of online learning, stricter rules in terms of online communication must be set in place between teachers and students. Schools must recontextualize existing guidelines about anti-sexual harassment to online learning as well as expand the definition of sexual misconduct to include those which may occur in the online setting. Furthermore, it must be stressed that personal um, accounts must not be used for contacting as well as uh, taking off or using unauthorized Screenshots of, conversa screenshots of conversations or photos online must not be tolerated. It's advisable that only one mode of, communications, um, of communication is to be used by all students and teachers, which can be easily uh, monitored by the school's administration. It's also important for schools to... Um, innovate schemes that will help maintain a good headspace for students such as counseling opportunities and supplementary activities that keep their members in check despite um, online, online learning. It's important also that schools ensure that their teachers should be able to spearhead the advocacy for safe spaces. There is a, a lot of room for threats to the safety of students, more so now because of online learning, but schools should be able to prioritize quality learning experiences by, um, by, by implementing rules and programs that are pro-student. So um, the solution to sexual harassment reports and to all other connected problems embedded in the complicated systems of different schools, MCHS uh, included, is not achieved overnight. The initiative to maintain safe spaces in educational institutions online or offline is a long-term commitment that requires a consistent and conscious effort to uphold it from all that make up the school. So that's it for today. We would like to thank all those who participated in our um, interview. And lastly, we would like to leave you a note that we value the safety of our students and everyone in the senior high school and everyone else. So. And apart from that, I'd also um, like to say that it's really important that these academic institutions actually do make a policy about sexual harassment within their schools, especially since schools ought to be something 
welcoming and safe, especially for the students. Okay. <clears throat> um, I feel like it's important. It's it's really good that there are some people that are willing to share these these experiences in order to warn people and to inform people that these quote unquote safe spaces might not be safe spaces at all. And in my opinion, it's really important that these people got to speak up and expose the the predators that are invading these safe spaces. So so that means that people the authorities can do something about it and they can be safe once again. The call to make all schools a safer place for its stakeholders is a call that can never be stressed enough. Ang plan ay dapat maging espasyo para matuto at kilalani ng bawat estudyante kung sino sila. Hindi dapat natin pinapabaya ang kwento ng diskriminasyon, sexual violence, o mental health. Kung ang paaralan ay ang pangalawang tahanan, anong klaseng tahanan ang tahanan hindi mo ramdam na protektado at tinatanggap ka? Anong klaseng tahanan ang hindi nakikinig? Pinabaliwala lang ang mga panghihingi mo ng tulong. Anong klaseng tahanan ang binabastos ka dahil babae ka? Pinudurog ang dignidad mo dahil sa kasarian mo? Kinukot siya ka dahil mahirap ka, scholar ka lang? At tinitnan ka na bilang terorista dahil muslim ka? Every school deserves to be a safe it must be conducive to learning it must not discriminate it must protect its stakeholders and it must reflect who you are and what you will be and that has been the message of this soar from our speakers and from APCO we want schools to be safer for a place for students to learn and for us and for a space for us to grow, not just us students, but for everyone in our academy. It should be a place of acceptance, a place where we can feel safe, where we can feel at home. Because the school should be your second home. And again, I hope that a lot of people here that joined up with us today has picked something from our very important and timely discussion especially if we're about to start a new school year in a very special setting and we're about to start a new school year again with our friends and teachers let's make school safer let's make it a safer space let's make this school year one that will be remember that will be remembered of not because of the bad things that has happened but because everyone has grown in a loving environment so again i'm dj dj i'm dj la I'm DJ Alas. And I'm DJ Corbo. And we'll see you again next time. Take care. Let's make school safer. And come fly with us on air next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.